So picture this. It's a typical day in the lab and three aerosol chemists are at work, diligently going about their research. But they just can't seem to focus. Writer's block, lab block, call it what you will, but it's just not working. Like any logical person would, they decide to take a break and head down to the beach to blow off some steam by shredding that gnar. Yee! Well, none of them are particularly skilled. They don't have to be. The desired effect is achieved nonetheless. Naturally, some of them are better than others. <laughs> but while they may have escaped the lab, they're still surrounded by aerosols. Sea spray aerosols, or SSA. This is the story of ACSSA. Sea spray aerosols first enter the atmosphere when waves break and bubbles burst at the surface of the ocean. These mechanisms are the largest source of particulate matter to the atmosphere by mass. After generation, some aerosols quickly re-enter the ocean. They aren't particularly down to party with the rest of them. The remaining aerosols become rapidly acidified via a few key processes. While the pH of seawater lies at about 8.1, sea spray aerosols can sit around 4 pH units lower. The smallest particles can even reach pH levels below 2. Processes such as water loss, the uptake of acidic gases, and atmospheric aging reactions with compounds such as sulfur dioxide are responsible for this acidification. These occur on different time scales, ranging from seconds up to days. It would not be entirely inaccurate to say that newly emitted aerosols drop in acid. Soon, the aerosols travel up further into the atmosphere. Some of these aerosols will become cloud condensation nuclei, which are critical in the formation of clouds. They provide a surface for the condensation of water vapor into droplets and are known as cloud seeds. The size of cloud droplets formed by these cloud condensation nuclei play an important role in the brightness of clouds, which in turn impacts the Earth's radiation budget and climate change. The radiation budget is the difference between the sunlight absorbed by the Earth and the energy radiated back into space. Other aerosols will end up as ice nucleating particles. They're important in the formation of ice clouds, which also impacts the global radiation budget, much like cloud condensation nuclei. Some particles enable atmospheric water to freeze at temperatures warmer than the homogeneous freezing temperature of pure water, which is negative 38 degrees Celsius. In general, these clouds and aerosols have significant uncertainty associated with them and their interactions. This means that the overall impact on the climate is also unknown and a significant amount of work will be needed to understand these interactions and their impact. Finally, some of these aerosols make their way back down to Earth in the form of precipitation. And with that, our re-energized aerosol chemists return to the lab and prepare to experiment. After generating aerosols at the beach, it is now time to study aerosols in the lab. But how exactly do they work? And how do they affect our climate system? With the brightest minds and the best of instruments, we may be able to unravel the mysteries behind our every breath of air.